Well, good morning, Element Church. It's so special to be able to still worship together and meet like this, even though we're not able to be uh, together in the same building. I'm so thankful that we're able to be together in spirit and in worshiping our Father. So let's go ahead and worship this morning. You make it easy to love you. today. Whatever it 
us, God. We will follow you anywhere. We thank you for your faithfulness, God, and the price that you paid on that cross. We thank you for the promise that you made to us, that you died for our sins so that we could have that salvation and that promise of eternal life with you in heaven. You're so worthy to be praised. We love you, Father. The cross is my beginning. The line drawn in the sand. The end of all my striving. forsaken so I will never be His grace is my salvation the gift of God the work of Calvary it is done it is finished Christ has won
What is up, everybody? Coming to you live again from the Hayes Living Room and from our home to yours. We want to say happy Sunday and happy Palm Sunday. We love you guys, Pastor Scott and Erica. And we want to welcome all of you to the live stream today. And the joke's getting old, but um, that's all of us. So <laughs> glad we can be together virtually and there's no distance in the spirit. So we're excited to be together and just really wrap our minds and our hearts and our spirits around hope today. And you know, God is a God of hope and we are people of hope. And so, so glad that we can join together and do that today. Um, as we mentioned, it is Palm Sunday and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means today. Uh, but we are entering into Holy Week. And so we are going to be reading the Bible together this week. We have soap readings on our website and uh, we're going to be reading through what Jesus was doing this week. And so we're going to celebrate today, Palm Sunday. We're going to celebrate all the way through the week. We'll hit um, Good Friday. We'll talk about that a little bit of what we're going to do today. So we're just really excited to spend some time together today. We've got some um, kind of state of element type things that we want to take you guys into as we get going here this morning. So Pastor Erica, why don't you lead us? into some of those items. Yeah, thank you. We um, actually just want to take a minute to just to really thank our worship team for that awesome pre-recorded worship. We yeah. just really appreciate that. So thank you guys again, everyone who was a part of that. We appreciate that. And we're looking forward to next Sunday, Easter Sunday. We can't wait. One of the things, one of the headlines that was, it was like Easter's canceled. And we're like, no, mm -hmm. it's not. The whole, the whole church like was like, no, <laughs> you know, like, it is you, not. You can't and cancel you the can't resurrection. Cancel Nobody could stop it. Yeah, and so it might look a little different this year, but I believe, and I, I really think we all believe that this is going to be an Easter like none other, where people are going to be crying out to the Lord and celebrating Him in a way like never before. Or, or the whole world, the whole world is united right now in this fight, and we're going to be united on Easter Sunday. So yeah, we're we excited about that. But yes, as Pastor Scott said, we have a couple uh, <laughs> announcements, or not really announcements, but just updates and stuff so right now actually if we want to all check in if you guys when you check in share the live stream invite other people to it so they can hop on um, we have a lot of great stuff still today so they haven't really even missed everything and so just share it it'll be great um last month um we oh i had that number but we can i'll put we'll put it up on our facebook page but it was like thousands of shoes that were donated and so for March for the Souls for Souls, but this month it is the COVID-19 um, support through Convoy of Hope is what we're supporting through our check-ins, through our Causely check-ins. And so make sure to check in today. We love that partnership with Causely when, to be able to do that. When you check in, make sure to use the hashtag Unstoppable Church. And yes. if you're able, take a picture of where you are and where you're joining today and post that. And as you, you guys are... Can share the live stream at the same time? That's a great question that I do not know the answer to. I don't know either. If you are a Facebook <laughs> awesome uh, ninja, maybe you can figure out how to do that. Okay. So. Um, anyway, do your best. And, uh, yeah, that's we awesome. So we want to update you guys on an incredible initiative that um, has launched this week that we as Element have launched and we're just inviting anyone and everyone to be a part of it. So um, we're going to show a little quick video, but uh, we'll actually we'll show the video and then we'll update you guys on our other details and stuff. So check out this video, guys. Hey everybody, Pastor Scott and Erica Hayes from Element Church in East Lansing. Welcome to our home and to our front porch. Like many of you, we have been at home during this crisis wondering, how can we make a difference? And the other day, an idea came across our phone that really captured our attention. It is called the Frontline Appreciation Group. And these groups are popping up all over the country, making a difference in their city. 
It's really a win-win-win. The communities are coming together, they're donating funds, and then those funds are going for us to Greater Lansing area local businesses and restaurants who are then preparing meals and delivering them directly to frontline workers. So there's actually two ways you can help. You can share and you can give and we can really make a difference together. There's a link attached, so share and give and help us support our community. All right, guys, so isn't that so exciting? We were just really praying and going, God, what do you want us to do? What can we facilitate as a church? And when this idea came across our phones, like we said, I mean, like, we didn't say this in the video, but like our bellies were like burning. I mean, and so we we just were like, oh my goodness, we have to, we have to do this. So we started as a, a group so that, you know, other churches can jump on if they want or just other groups can jump on. And so we've made some awesome traction in just a couple days. I think we have close to a thousand dollars raised already. And so we, and we did our first delivery on a Friday, Friday night. night. And so and we're going to launch those deliveries strong this week. And we will be posting on that flag page. We'll, we'll also be um, sharing to uh, our element page. But I believe that that link to the flag um, page, the flag landing. Now, it is flag landing. There was another group that popped up because they found the same awesome idea. And so there is another one in Lansing right now. They're doing great stuff. But if you want to be a part of what we're doing um, with the flag landing group, um, just make sure it's it's us that you and, and you can the, tell the little the, the little different. the little logo is purple and it has an FL on it. it looks like a flag, like uh -huh. the little logo. So yeah, yep. and it has you know it looks element ish and stuff. And then the giving link is um, we're running that through Element and trying to um, so we're so appreciative of the administrative for it that um, Element is you know donating towards that and so it's right. So we're so excited. So we did our first delivery on um, uh, Friday night to the COVID um, 7 West at Sparrow. And on that flag page, you can see like they sent us uh, just, they're so appreciative. And one of our Element family delivered that, yeah. Can I just like, you, you went past that really fast. COVID yeah. 7 West, people may not know what that is. Can yeah. you just tell them what that is? Cause I, I didn't know what that was. Well, so. it is a floor on Sparrow specifically dedicated to COVID patients. And so there's a couple floors I think right now specifically dedicated. And so the Quisenberries were able to go help deliver that this um, week and they just, said that they were so appreciative and um, that they just looked weary and that the food and the love from the church and the community um, was just such an encouragement to them. And so we want to do that and we don't want to just do that for healthcare workers because, you know, there's a lot of other people. There's people preparing meals for kids, school workers. I mean, we have frontline workers all over the place, including our medical community. We have, you know, police officers. We have grocery store employees that are keeping us fed. And as much money as we can get in, we want to channel all of that directly back into local businesses to help stimulate them because they're suffering right now. And then and then show appreciation to all of these workers who, who aren't at home. They're still having to go on the front lines to help keep all of us you know, healthy and fed and all of that. And so we are so appreciative and we want to show that. So this is just a practical way that we can rally. So go right now, guys. So how and, can I, yeah. Pastor, so how, can, how I can I help? What can I do? I'm, I'm watching the live stream. <laughs> help me. What do I do? Okay. So go to that flag page. First of all, if you haven't liked the element page, like the element page, because we'll keep um, sending out updates. And when you like a page, it it, it sends things. It'll, tri it'll trigger things. So you'll see them more often. So make sure you like our element page, but go and like our flag page. And that link should be in your, um, in, in the comment thread right now. That's our flag page. And that's where you can like it and then you can share it. And then obviously giving um, um, towards it is an awesome way, you know, as an offering right now, if you want, if you're looking for an initiative to give into right now. Awesome. Aside from your, aside from the church, so yeah. Awesome. Uh, for those of us who are looking for opportunities to move past just a practical community service, um, which is so important, into something even like uh, less tangible, more spiritual. That's probably not the right way to say that. But well, you know, um, as a church, right? We're, we're spirit, soul, and body. So we are looking for ways right now to meet physical needs, to yes. take action in the physical, and so that's where this this flag group opportunity that we're launching, um, that we've launched, I should say, uh, is, is such a great fit. 
And then we're also, guys, that's not the only thing we're doing too. We're still helping meet other needs as they come in um, as best we can uh, as a church. And so that's a huge thing too. Just, you know, our outreach team is doing other things. We're trying to help people feel supported. We have calls that are going to start going out um, this week, just checking in with people. So if you want to be a part of that, that outreach link is on our page. So you can let us know through that. And then so there is the spiritual. Right. There so is the spiritual component. Yeah. So physical and spiritual. We're all trying to do that both right now. So the spiritual, and again, it's it's all, right, we're three-part mm-hmm. beings. So yeah. it all goes together. Mm-hmm. But if you're like, hey, that's great. I do want to help. I do want to share. I do want to donate. Great. And then how spiritually, what are we doing as a church? Yeah. So why don't so, you tell us about that? Great. Obviously, we've been doing, you know, the, the soaping together. We're, we're going to continue that series today, learning to hear from God. But another thing that we're going to unite with, guys, is a movement, a global prayer movement. Um, you guys know that twice a year we partner with ARC and, well, we're always partnering with ARC, right? We are ARC. Um, but we join with our ARC family to do uh, 21 days of prayer. And so right now during this global global crisis, uh, Highlands has launched a uh, just a global prayer movement, and it is based on the scripture uh, in Corinthians, or sorry, Chronicles. in Chronicles yeah. seven fourteen that says, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land." And so, basically, what this is, guys, is you can hopefully that um, link is in your comments. Also, it is uh, unite seven fourteen. Com. And every morning and every night, there's a call to prayer at 714 in reference to the scripture that we're calling really like the world to unite in prayer, um, uh, just to seek uh, the Lord, to cry out to him and to continue to pray for healing for our land. And then there is kind of just, and we're going to read this in a minute, but there are um uh, collective prayers that we'll be praying together so that we are united in prayer together. So we're going to do that in just a second. Pastor Eric is going to pray for us. So Unite uh, 714, okay, is a global prayer movement. Mm-hmm. And there are churches and individuals literally from all over the globe that are partnering together to say, hey, we can't control this thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. So God, we need you. And, and of course, we've always needed God in the same way. It's just, uh, I remember seeing a quote recently that said, that this uh, hasn't changed that much, but it's made us realize that we don't have control. So it really hasn't changed the amount of control we have. It just made us realize we don't have control. And so really to go to our knees and to pray and to call out to God, like Second Chronicles says, and just to say, God, we need you in a fresh way. So here's what you can do. Unite714.com. Okay. You can sign up as an individual or you can sign up as a church, which we've done as Element Church already. And so what they're asking the churches to do is during their live stream services to pray to pray the prayer together each Sunday. Mm-hmm. So each week they actually put out a prayer and the church, which we'll do here in a second, we pray this prayer together on our live stream. And then they're asking individuals who sign up to pray this same prayer and they give out a prayer every week to pray this same prayer twice a day, 714 in the morning, 714 in the evening. So, and it's literally people all over the world doing this. So we're praying this prayer together for this week and next Sunday they'll put a new prayer out and then we'll all pray together that prayer for the week as well. So you can sign up on that. We wanna let you guys know we're gonna be doing a Good Friday uh, uh, virtual service this Friday night at 7 p.m. And we will be praying together at 714 this Friday night during our Good Friday service. So put that on your calendar, Friday night. 7 p.m., Good Friday, and we'll be doing worship. We'll have a little sermonette or a little mini sermon. Uh, we'll talk about what Good Friday is and the cross. Um, we'll take communion together and we'll, we'll do some worship. Did I say that already? Yeah. Um, prayer and worship. So we'll be doing that Friday. Uh, it'll probably be about 40 minutes, something like that. And we will pray this prayer again together Friday night at 7.14 p.m. So put that on your calendar and join with us. Pastor Erica, why don't you pray us in today? into learning from the Bible together and lead us in prayer. Awesome. So, yeah, so I'm going to pray real quick, and then Pastor Scott's going to take the reins and uh, give us an awesome word today. So we're excited. So, Lord, um, so let's just pray together, guys. Um, Lord, we come to you in prayer today, believing the promise in 2 Chronicles 7.14 that if we humble ourselves, pray, and turn from our wicked ways, you will hear our, you will hear our prayer and heal our lands. 
Our community, nation, and world are in desperate need of your help, comfort, and healing power. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for turning our hearts away from you. Hear our cry today as we join the body of Christ around the world to stand together against the COVID-19 crisis. Lord, strengthen our minds and emotions with the truth that you are greater than COVID-19. Your righteousness protects our hearts from despair. Your word enables us to walk through this crisis in peace. Although this is a physical disease, as believers, we know the enemy wants to take advantage of this moment. Together, we stand in faith against the power of darkness in this world, in this evil day. We put on the whole armor of God and stand firm, firm on the promise of your word. With your armor, we stand protected from the fiery darts of panic and fear. We take up the shield of faith on behalf of our families, our churches, our cities, our nation, and the nations of the world. The hope of salvation is our battle helmet. We declare the promise in your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Therefore, we pray in faith that COVID-19 will be eradicated. Panic will stop and the power and God's power will fill the earth. We humbly ask all these things in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. Hey, you guys, that's some fire. Let's pray that together twice a day and know that you're joining with a global prayer movement that is, that is, we're crying out to God for that uh, twice a day. So awesome. Thank you for leading us in that. I'll go ahead and just pray us into our service today. So Father, we just thank you for this time that we can gather in a virtual space, God. There is no distance in the spirit and there is no distance in this technology, Father. We just thank you that we can come together today, feel united as a body, God, that we can encourage. It says, in your word where two or more are gathered that you are in that place and God we pray right now God that you fill each and every one of our homes with your Holy Spirit God that as we gather today that you speak to our hearts God you fill us God with your hope God and your direction God we do uh, just command fear to go we do silence the panic Father God we thank you that your people God will rise up and lead in this time God that they will be full of maturity God in your spirit and that you will mature us even even more through these challenging times, Father. We just thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to continue to do and for this opportunity to gather together. Speak to our hearts now. Thank you for anointing Pastor Scott as he speaks, God, your word and as he teaches us. And we just thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. Thank you. I'll be back. (laughs) All right, you guys. So uh, here's what we want to do. Uh, you know, Pastor Eric and I have been praying and we're like, okay, so what, what can we do to support and lead our people in the best way possible in this time? And really here's the deal. We can do a lot of like rah, rah and support and encouragement. And we, you know, we want to do that. I mean, that's not to say that that's not important, but we're like, you know, people need to hear from God because God's word is where the power is. God's word is where um, his peace is, where his hope is. It's God's presence and God's word. And so so for us, we've really taken on the, um, the challenge or the mandate to say we want to lead our people into God's word in a fresh way in this season. And so we've been launching into a new series here at Element called SOAP, which is Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer, and really figuring out how do we read God's word together because really that's where um, God is. It's where his hope is, where his peace is, where his grace is, where his power is. And so um, today I want to talk to us about the second part of SOAP. We talked about scripture last week. Today I want to talk to you about observation. And I really feel like this is maybe um, a, how do I want to say this? It's one of the things I'm most passionate about in life is helping people understand the Bible. And I think this, this specific part is something where so many people stumble and trip. And so my hope and passion today is that I can help us grow a little bit in this area, and then in doing so, we can engage God's word in a fresh way, and we can receive fresh hope, fresh vision, fresh power, and we can be have a, a sense of nearness to him that maybe we've never experienced before. So I want to ask you a question as we start in. Have you ever had communication that got lost in translation? And I know that we all have. And here's what I think is so interesting is God sent us his word, the Bible, okay? And I think the enemy gets in, our enemy of our soul, Satan gets in and starts to mess with and manipulate the communication. 
And so today I want to talk about observing the Bible in context and how that helps us actually grow closer to God, which leads to hope and peace. So a um, so quick story that I like to share about this is um, a story that some of you have maybe heard me share in the past about did you wash your hands. And so years ago, I was actually doing a wedding. I was doing a, uh, the wedding for Adam and Caitlin Klein. Many of you know them, and I think they're on here today. I know I was texting with them this week, and I'm like, hey, are you guys okay if I share your name on the live stream because this is like getting recorded and pushed out? They're like, share it. This is awesome. And uh, Adam actually sent me a, a cool um, meme back of Snoop Dogg. So that's awesome. But, um, uh, so I was doing their wedding. Okay. And, uh, we were on Friday night. It was the rehearsal dinner and the rehearsal dinner was uh, at a home and we were, uh, we were eating sandwiches and barbecue chips, which were the barbecue chips were out of sight. They were amazing. And if you know me, you know, I like barbecue chips. And so anyway, we're eating a meal together and uh, I'm like, I ate the barbecue chips. I'm like, those are good. I'm going to go get some more. So I go into the house from the garage and the outside where we were all at and I go into the house and there's a big bowl of barbecue chips and I'm looking around and I don't see any tongs or anything like that. So I'm like, Hey, here we go. Uh, you know, and so I go to reach my hand into the bowl to grab out some chips, which, you know, I had a little bit of a pause. Should I do this? And I go in and right as I'm about to touch the chips, I hear from the other room, this very commanding male voice says, do you wash your hands? And I'm like, I literally, you guys, I, I, I froze and I was, and I just, you know, oh, uh, and I was like, <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed, you know? And I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. And, uh, and so out, you know, the bowl and I go in the kitchen and I wash my hands and I go and I grab the chips and I put the chips onto my plate and I'm, and I'm going to go to the other room to apologize, you know, sorry for dipping into the barbecue chip bowl with unclean hands. And, and as I go around the corner, I see Caitlin's brother and he's actually there. And I see down the hallway from where he is in the other room, his, his child comes out of the bathroom having just washed their hands. And what I realized in a moment is that her brother was in the other room, didn't even see me in the kitchen, and just so happened that as I reached my hand into the barbecue chip bowl, he was talking to his child who was coming out of the bathroom who had not cleaned their hands and said, did you wash your hands? And I literally from the other room took a message that was sent to someone else. I applied it into my life, into my context, and I totally misunderstood the message. And now here's the thing. Here's what's beautiful is that that message was not to me. His, his did you wash your hands was not to me, but it was still for me. I mean, there's still a good principle there. Should I have washed my hands before I dip in the community barbecue chips? Of course. But the tone and the context was not meant for my situation because it was given to someone else. And so there's so many times when communication gets lost in translation. And when we read the Bible, what we have to understand is that the entire Bible was written for us but the entire Bible is not written specifically to us. And so there's a little bit of observation, translation work that we need to do as we read the Bible to say, what was the original author intending to say to the original audience? And so in that moment, I understand, oh, he's in the other room talking to his child about washing their hands after going to the bathroom. I can take that same principle and now move it forward and apply it to my situation as I'm getting chips out of a community barbecue chip bowl. The principle translates, the tone and the context didn't translate. And as we look at the Bible, it's so important for us to, to observe what the context is. So I want to quickly today, in the time that we have left, which is not a ton of time, uh, I want to I breeze through this quickly and give you five keys to observing Scripture. So here we go. If you're a note taker, get your pencils out and get your wrists ready because we're going to rock and roll. So number one, the first key is to understand the larger story of the Bible. And here's the deal. The Bible is 66 books written by about 40 authors uh, over thousands of years. And it all weaves together to tell the master narrative of God's interaction with his people. In Luke 24, 27, Jesus is talking after he's um, re resurrected and he's walking with um, some disciples. And it says, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, that's the whole entire Old Testament, he, Jesus, explained to them what was said in all of the scriptures concerning himself. And so Jesus is there telling the disciples, hey, this is what the Old Testament said, and this is how it all correlates to my life, Jesus would say. And then the rest of the Bible is then, you know, the church, the early church started to actually take what Jesus did, which was 
to resurrect from the dead and bring us all into eternal life, give us that opportunity and that offer, and then live out that kind of um, life with God. And so that's the grand narrative of the Bible. And if we read the Bible and don't understand that, and we just jump into a moment of that narrative without understanding the larger story, we'll miss so much. So, you know, if we're watching a movie, you know, some of us were like, this is so complicated. It's really not that complicated because, like, if you watch a movie, and you know, it's a two hour movie and you jump into a moment in the movie and you watch that moment in the movie, you would never watch one moment and then just watch a moment and then slip out and go, oh, well, well I understand the movie now. You have to understand the entire narrative of the movie and that gives light to the context of that specific story. And so that's how we understand movies. That's how we understand good books. That's how we understand um, good history. And so the Bible is no different. And so we have to understand, um, and it's a Bible word, but um, hermeneutics or exegesis, you exegete passages. Um, that means basically doing the work to go into the scripture and ask this question. What did the original author intend to say to the original audience? So that would be like going into a movie and saying, what is this movie all about? Now, as I go in and I watch a scene, I understand that those characters are speaking in a larger context. And we've got to do that with the Bible if we're going to understand what's going on. The second key to understanding or observing scripture is to understand the type of literature that you're reading. And again, there's a lot of great study on this. Um, just a kind of as a cursory overview, in the Bible, there are different types of writing. There's history, there's law writing, there's wisdom literature, there's poetry, there's prophecy, there's the gospels, which tell about Jesus's life. And then there's letters to the early church that are written back and forth from the early uh, disciples and apostles. And so we have to understand how those different types of literature work. And a lot of times people ask me, Pastor Scott, do you take the Bible literally? And I would say, I take the Bible literally when it intends to be taken literally. And again, this is not as hard as it might sound. The Bible tells us a lot of times whether it's being literal or whether it's not. I'll give you two quick examples. Number one is in Deuteronomy 1. And it says this, these are the words of Moses, specific person, spoken to all of Israel in the wilderness east of the Jordan, that is in Arabah, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tafel, Laban, Hezeroth, and Dizahab. It takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount of Seir Road. In the 14th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses proclaimed to the Israelites, and then it goes on to what Moses said. Now, does that sound figurative or does that sound literal? I would say that sounds pretty literal. They're telling you where and when and the dates and the times and the people. Um, that sounds more like history. Then if you move on to Song of Solomon, chapter 7, 2 through 4, um, I'll ask you, is the Bible being literal? Ready? Um, this is two lovers speaking to each other. It says, your navel is a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a heap of wheat. Encircled with lilies, verse 3, your two breasts are like two fawns, twin of gazelle. I hope that's not literal. Your neck is like an ivory tower. I hope that's not literal. And as you read that, you understand that's not historical and literal. That is figurative and poetic. And so the Bible speaks in different types of literature, and we've got to understand the different types of literature that it's doing, or we're going to misunderstand the Bible. I talked with someone one time, and they said to me, Pastor Scott, I'm trying to read my Bible I just don't understand it. I went back and I started in the book of Leviticus and I'm just not sure what's going on. And I said to them, um, you know, Leviticus is an Old Testament book that is actually the ritual, legal, and moral practices for the, is, uh, the, for the Israelites and the Levitical priesthood, which is one of the tribes inside of the Israeli nation. And uh, so it was like, it makes sense why that's not landing for you. So what we have to understand is the different types of literature in the Bible. And again, you guys, this is so important because it helps us engage God in real time. And when we engage God and understand his communication, we can lean into hope and into passion and into power. Number three is to let the Bible interpret the Bible. And here's the deal. Um, Greg Kokel says this. He says, never read a Bible verse. And what he means is you never read a Bible verse by itself. You read the Bible in the context of, again, the grander narrative and in the totality of the Bible. And so we understand that there are things in the Bible that when we read just a verse, they're kind of confusing. But when we put those up against the, the backdrop or the, the canvas of the larger scripture, we understand what the Bible is actually talking about. So one of these is like uh, maybe the nature of salvation in the New Testament. And, uh, and this is important because for so many of us, we'll read a scripture that says something like, 
be perfect because your Father in heaven is perfect. And we'll read that and we'll go, oh, well, the requirement of me from the Bible is that I need to be perfect. And what we don't understand is the context of how that was said. And we understand that we don't need to be perfect to be uh, in relationship with God because the entire narrative of the Bible tells us that. So it's really important to understand that Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it's the gift of God, not a result of your works, so that no one can boast. So again, really important for us to understand that. Key number four is that we need to understand the difference between descriptive and prescriptive writing in the Bible. You guys, this is so important and so um, imperative for us to, to understand that the Bible is doing two things often. It's describing things. And then it's prescribing things. And describing, okay, is something that happens. So when we describe something, we describe what happened. Prescri prescribing something, prescribing, prescribing something is what should happen. And so the Bible talks in these two types of dis description and prescription. And we need to understand what the differences are. So um, I'll say this. The Bible is not afraid of the human condition. And the Bible is not afraid of getting messy. And I love that about the Bible, don't you? Is that God's not afraid of our condition. He's not afraid of speaking to real issues. And so, um, you know, the Bible contains description about a whole lot of things. And the Bible description um, it talks about, I wrote a couple of these in my notes. It talks about murder and it talks about deceit and lying. And it talks about um, polygamy and slavery and all these crazy things. Because those are things that happen in the human condition. But the Bible describes those things, but the Bible doesn't prescribe those things. So, for example, if you take slavery, people say, well, you know, the Bible should be chucked out because it's an archaic book and it doesn't relate to us. And I mean, it like talks about things that would be good, like it talks about slavery. Well, the Bible does talk about slavery because if you just look at history, it's pretty much a, um, a universal human institution until recently, which is so cool that it's not anymore, at least for many parts of the world. Um, and it still is in a lot of other parts of the world. So the Bible talks about slavery, but the Bible doesn't prescribe slavery. You say, yeah, well, it talks about, you know, hey, masters and slaves do this or do that. Sure, because it's describing that institution. But at least four times in the New Testament, the Bible is revolutionary. And even in the Old Testament, in so many spots where it actually elevates slaves and says, slaves are actually human beings on equal status as human beings with their masters. And in God's eyes, that's how they should be treated. That is revolutionary in the Bible. And so the Bible describes slavery, but it prescribes that people are equal. And that was revolutionary for the time that the Bible was written. And so we've got to be careful when we are applying descriptive things that the Bible does. And we're saying, well, the Bible prescribes this. That's not how it works. And again, I want to be super clear. The reason that all of this matters is because we're doing work, you guys, as we're reading the Bible. We're observing and we're understanding what God is saying. And we need to understand what is written to us and what is written for us. And I want to bring back the scripture that Pastor Erica launched off of, which is Unite. 714, 2 second Chronicles 714. Okay, so let's do the work here. Ready? If my people who are called by my name, who is he talking to? He's talking to he's talking to Israel, he's talking to the Hebrews. Okay? So that is not, he's not talking to me, but he's talking to his people in the Old Testament. But watch this, right? I am now included into his people, right, in the New Testament. And so there's this historical narrative that happens and I'm now included in. So God is not speaking to me, but the principle is the same. And God is now speaking to me because the principle correlates. So when it's written to the Hebrew people, it's descriptive. But now the principle is actually prescriptive to me. Second Chronicles 714. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin. And I'll heal, heal their land. So that's really important. And key five, and I'll, I'll kind of close our teaching time with this. And this is, um, I think, the most hope-filled of all of these is that we need to understand in the Bible that there are two covenants. And in the Old Testament, um, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. In the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, that is a methodology of God interacting with his people. And when Jesus came, Jesus introduced a new covenant or a new methodology of God interacting with his people. And the covenants go together, but they are different. And if there's an Old Testament, an Old Covenant, and a New Testament or a New Covenant. And the New Testament says that Jesus came and introduced a new way of relating with God. It's built on the old way, but it is, it is the evolution that was intended from the beginning of how God interacts with his people. And so um, the Old Covenant is the law. The, um, the New Covenant is the gospel. 
And um, people get confused about this. Jesus is doing two things when he's here on the earth. Jesus is both elevating the Old Testament law to its highest degree, and then he's introducing a New Testament covenant through himself. So let me give you an example. I referenced earlier that Jesus says in the Bible, you must be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. And we take that and we say, oh, I've got to be perfect or I can't be in good relationship with God. Jesus was speaking to the religious leaders of the day and he was doing something very specific with that statement. And if you read the context of that portion, if you observe that portion of scripture, what you see is that Jesus is elevating the law. He's saying, look, in the Old Testament, they said, if you, um, if you, uh, kill your neighbor. That's part of the Ten Commandments uh, against the Ten Commandments. But I tell you, if you are angry in your heart, you've killed your neighbor. He's taking the law. He's elevating it. You need to be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. The law is so holy you could never keep it. And what Jesus is doing is he's showing us that we could never do the things that we need to do to actually be in right footing with God. And if you look at world religions and you look at worldviews and you look at all of that um, context, really all world religions are very similar in one way. And that is that I am the person responsible for uh, pulling myself up by my bootstraps, doing the right things and achieving something in order to please God. And in, in, the, uh, in the elevation of the law, what Jesus is doing is letting us know as his people, you can never do enough to earn relationship with God, ever. And he's elevating that so that we throw our hands up and say, I could never do this. And then he says, perfect, you're right where you need to be. And again, you can read all about this in the book of Romans and in the book of Hebrews about how the law was intended to bring us guilty before God to silence our mouths. And, and I'm paraphrasing for us to throw our hands up and say, woe is me. I need a savior. And so Jesus is doing that work to elevate the law. And then when we throw our hands up and say, I need a savior, the second part of what Jesus is doing is introducing the new covenant. And he's saying, I'm glad you see your need for a savior. By the way, I'm here. And as we enter into Holy Week, that is what we're wrapping our minds and our hearts around is to say, Jesus, you have come as the savior, as the one who will do what I could never do. The one who would pay for my sin and bring me back into right relationship with my father in heaven. And we say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. And you guys, if we don't understand the Bible and the context of the Bible, we will miss the message and we'll be left in a place where we're saying, I don't deserve to be with God. Instead of us saying, Jesus, thank you for what you've done. We've got to get this Bible reading stuff right. And I think the enemy has stolen so much from us in translation of communication where it's been lost. And so many of us feel like we're being scolded for taking barbecue chips out of the bowl when it was never intended that way. And so I want to leave us today with this together. You guys, we've got to be engaging our word together. We've got to be understanding the Bible and we've got to be understanding the context of what's done. I want to ground out this time of teaching together to say this. You guys, we're in an unprecedented time right now. We're in a time like nothing that we have seen in our lifetimes. And, um, and we have an opportunity to go back to um, the roots of where we've been as a nation and as a people. And there, um, there are so many things that are pointing us back to our need from God for, for God and reading the Bible. I want to share something with you. I've printed it out. I'm going to grab it here. Um, this was actually, I know there's a lot of prophetic words and things like that. This was a prophetic word that was given by David Wilkerson, who wrote The Cross and the Switchblade, if you've ever read that book or ever heard of that. Um, but uh, in New York City, he was, a, he was an evangelist in New York City, and uh, there was a gang leader named Nicky Cruz. And they had uh, an interaction one time, as the story goes, in an alley where Nicky Cruz, the leader of a gang, pulled out a switchblade and held it up to David Wilkerson's face or throat and said, um, if you don't stop telling me about Jesus, I'll cut you into a thousand pieces. And David Wilkerson responded to Nicky Cruz and said this, you can do that and every one of those pieces will cry out that God loves you. And it broke down Nicky Cruz in such a way that he converted, turned his life to Jesus, surrendered, um, as we've been talking about today. And he actually started a relationship with Jesus and it changed the trajectory not only of his life but of this entire gang. You can read about that in a book called The Cross and the Switchblade. But David Wilkerson, the man who said in every piece of me will cry out that God loves you, in 1986 was doing a, a talk. And he was in New York City and he said this. This was fascinating to me. He said this. He said, I see a plague coming on the world. And the bars and the church and the government will shut down. 
The plague will hit New York City and shake it like it's never been shaken. The plague is going to force prayerless believers into radical prayer and into their Bibles and repentance will be the cry from the man of God in the pulpit. And out of it will come a third great awakening that will sweep America and the world. And can I just say this, you guys, we've, we've, we're being called in this time, even back in 1986, through a prophetic word, we're being called back to our faces, back to repentance, back to the Bible to say, God, we need you in a fresh way. And guys, let's read our Bibles together. So as we go into Holy Week this week, we've got a Bible reading plan for you on our website um, you can go there and you can you can read right along with us. We're going to be posting this week about what we're reading. We encourage you to do the same thing. Let's go into this Holy Week together. Let's engage Jesus with our hearts and our minds. Let's lean into his hope. Let's lean into his passion. Let's lean into um, who God is and who we get to be in light of him. And let's go engage God together this week as we turn our gaze to God and we come back in a fresh way. So let me pray over us this morning. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. God, we thank you that we can read your word together. And God, as we read it in context and we understand what you're speaking to us, God, that all the Bible is for us, but it's not all to us. And as we do the work of observing your scripture in context, God, would you breathe fresh illumination and revelation on your people? God, I pray right now for supernatural understanding of your word. God, I pray for remembrance of the scripture for, for your people. God, I pray for, God, a fresh anointing as we open our Bibles, God, that you will literally, God, speak and move. God, that you'll convict, that you'll draw us to repentance. God, that you'll reveal the hidden things of our hearts. God, I pray, God, for fresh encounters in the Bible. I pray for fresh encounters with your word. I pray for fresh encounters with your presence. God, I pray that it would be a third great awakening, that we would turn to you, God, in fresh ways. And God, people would be drawn to you like never before. God, I pray right now for anybody who's watching or listening that's never started a relationship with you right now and they want to turn their life over to you like Nikki Cruz. They've been running. God, they've not, they've not understood that they can come to you and they can surrender their life and receive from you love and grace in order to have a relationship with you, God. And so, Jesus, we thank you that this week, more than any other, represents that you came and died on the cross to pay for our sins. If you're watching this or listening and you want to start a relationship with God and you want to receive Jesus' gift of forgiveness of your sin and you want to repent and you want to say, God, you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. If you want to do that this morning, Pray this with me. Pray this with us. Just say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross to pay for my sin. I receive your gift of grace over my life. I repent and I confess of my sin to you. And I, and I say, God, come and have all of my life, all of my heart. I want to live for you and I want to live with you. And God, I thank you that your promise is that as I turn my life to you, God, you'll receive me into your kingdom and you'll lead me and guide, guide me. You'll put your Holy Spirit in me to lead me, guide me and speak to me. I thank you for that today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Awesome, you guys. Pastor Eric is going to lead us in a couple quick follow-ups on that, and then we're going to close our time today taking communion together. Yeah, if you prayed that prayer with us, we just want to celebrate with you. If you are on the live stream and you want to throw a hand up, we would love to just celebrate with you and connect with you, and we can actually connect with you virtually. If you want to text um, ELEMENT to 97000, then um, you will get a link, and if you fill that out, you can just let us know that you made a commitment today. That link can also be used for all kinds of other stuff. If you have prayer requests, this is for anyone. If you text ELEMENT to 97000 and you want to submit prayer requests or you want to sign up for our baptism because we are going to get back together and we're going to have a baptism this summer that is going to be awesome at Link Lansing. And if you want to be baptized, um, if you would like to do our New Here Connect, if you want to connect with ELEMENT Church even during this time, and join our community in, a, in another way. If you want to find out about groups and you want to, we do still have our groups going, guys, um, on our groups page. We have an awesome prayer group that's meeting um, to jump into. We have a young adult group. We have our Element Youth Group. They're all doing such a great job meeting um, virtually and still staying connected. So we would love for you to connect with us. There's other groups on our groups page, right on our website. Um, but yeah, so just text that link. We would love to connect with you. And then directly after this call, we're going to have another um, a, a Zoom call, a new here connect Zoom call. So if you want to jump on that with us uh, and get to know uh, just 
your next steps with us on your spiritual journey here at Element Church, then we would love to have you with us. So if you text that number and fill out that link and, and click New Here Connect, then we'll send you the link for the Zoom call uh, after this uh, gathering. And so uh, what else do we have here? Uh, just give you guys an opportunity to, to give. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we've got that information that. on the screen. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm, I just want to say thank you for your continued to, so continue to support during this time. You know, we want to come out of this season just like all of us do. We want to come out as a church stronger and your giving, your continued giving um, to Element Church helps us be able to lead as a church community during this time to, to launch these initiatives that we're doing in our community to lead strong. And so we are so appreciative. So we just wanted to say thank, thank you, you for your continued support. Yeah. Um, and, and then also, um, if you want to sign up for online giving, you can do that. The link is going right into um the thread right now um and then also we want to continue to let you know what we talked about earlier for those of you who may have jumped on a little bit late an initiative that we have are heading up here in the area as a church is called flag there's a link that uh the actual page link that has been started will be put in the thread also but it's frontline appreciation group where we can do two things at once we can help um, support our local businesses with the funds that come in. So we'll purchase um, coffee, meals, wh whatever we can, donuts, <laughs> whatever uh, businesses we can help support. And then we'll take those and we'll give them to our frontline workers, our medical workers, our grocery store workers, our school um, people who are still crushing it, trying to feed kids. And so it's just a way that we can just do some incredible work during this time. And so like that page, share that page. We'll be putting updates like crazy on both pages. Um, but anything else you want to say on that? I, I just want to say guys, like please take serious, like the, the ask to share and to like things. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just, it's literally like a button click, but you, I don't know fully if we all understand the power of us just contributing like that together. So obviously donations are huge, yes, and all of that, but just sharing and liking, we can really build momentum together and help people mm -hmm. by literally just clicking a button. So please do that. Go like things, go share things. When you see it, just click the like button. Um, we can make a huge difference together yeah. if we'll all do that. Because so. it'll run into people who can give. You know, there's, right. there's a lot of people that aren't working right now. There's a lot of people that still are, and they are helping initiatives like this like crazy and and so it's it's you never know who's going to see stuff so it does make a difference absolutely so you guys we want to close today with taking communion together so um if you do not yet have uh anything for communion we sent out this week in the in your element that we'd be taking communion together um so uh if you want go grab right now take your little phone or or just turn your tv up and run and grab quick uh, a cracker, um, <laughs> well, some some yeah. bread. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, while we're running, just something that came to my mind. Uh, you did such a good job telling that story about Caitlin's brother. Caitlin's brother was is a nice man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Really oh, scary. yeah. Um, <laughs> He's like, turn around and watch it. It was scary. He had a deep voice. He had a deep voice. But he was being a good daddy <laughs> right then, <laughs> having his kid wash his hands. So I just wanted Thank to. Thank you. That's good. We use names, and we all know who we're talking about. That's really good. <laughs> Um, He's a great storyteller, isn't he? He's uh, amazing. He's very dramatic. So I'm very dramatic. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a passionate storyteller. So um, so as you're going and gathering up some elements here, uh, anything will work. Some bread, a cracker, a crouton, whatever works for you. Um, again, communion um, is holy in the taking. Uh, the elements uh, in and of themselves are not are not holy. It's uh, you know the crackers at church are not holy crackers. It's the act of taking those, which is holy. And so you can do that right where you are. So um, maybe some grape juice if you have it. Um, if you don't, some, uh, I mean, even water works, but uh, Jesus can turn it into wine. Um, <laughs> however, that needs to work. But whatever you have on hand, just grab it. And, um, and we're going to take communion together. So This is something that a lot of people are also doing just throughout the week in their homes with their families. You know, we have several element families who are even nightly taking communion together as a reminder of the covenant that we have with the Lord and his healing power in not only for our own bodies right now, for, but for our land. So we encourage everyone to do that. Absolutely. So, so guys, we're going to do this again on our Good Friday service. We'll take communion. So have your elements ready if you're going to join us for that. But today, um, 
We're going to take this together. And I want to just remind you that um, Jesus uh, was with his disciples the night before he was betrayed. And um, this is actually the scripture out of 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 26. I think uh, we're going to post just the, the scripture reference on there um, because I'm just going to paraphrase it for you. But uh, he said to his disciples, he, he held up that night bread and he broke it. And he said, um, this is my body that, that is broken for you. Every time you take of this, do this in remembrance of me. And we understand that his body was broken for us to meet so many of our needs. But what I love about communion is that there's a physical body that was broken and there was blood that was poured out. We'll talk about that in just a second. And the body was given to meet our physical needs. God is not a God who just sits in heaven and is spiritually far off somewhere. He's a God that came in the flesh. He's a God that came in body. And he came to meet us. And he today cares about your physical need today. He cares about what we're going through right now. He's a God who's near. He's a God that weeps with us. He's a God that cares. And when we take the bread, we remember that. And then when we, um, it says on the same way that night when he was, before he was betrayed, it says he took the cup that was crushed grapes and he poured it out. And he said, this is my blood that will be poured out for you in a new covenant. We talked about that today. Each time you take of this, do it in remembrance of me. And when we take of the cup, we remember that spiritually, God has done everything that he's ever needed to do to bring us back into right relationship with God. We talked about that today in the new covenant. So as we take communion today, let's remember that God is here for us physical in the here and now. He cares about us. And let's remember that he's done everything that he needs to do to pay for our sin and to bring us back into right relationship with God. So I'm going to grab my elements here. And you can grab yours wherever you are, right where you are. And on that night, Jesus held up bread to heaven and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body broken for you. Each time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's take this bread together. God, we thank you for your physical sacrifice for us on the cross. And God, as we enter into Holy Week, God, I pray that God, we would remember you. That we would remember you in a fresh way this week, God. That we would remember what you gave to show us and to prove to us that you came physically for us. And God, that that means that you're physically available to us now. And God, you care about the number of hairs on our head. God, you care about the struggles and the wrestles that we're facing today. And God, you've not left us or forsaken us, but you are a God who is with us and has put your spirit in us. And we thank you for that. And in the same way, you guys, on that night, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that will be poured out for you in a new covenant. Each time you take of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup together. And Jesus, we thank you that your blood was poured out to pay for our sin. And even right now, God, as we've talked about repentance today, God, would you reveal anything in us, God, that doesn't look like you, anything that's not pleasing and God, as you reveal that to us and help us be aware of that, God, I pray, God, that we not move into condemnation and let the enemy get in and mix with communication lines, but God, that we would receive your life and power and forgiveness in the place of brokenness, weakness, and sin in our lives. God, we call it what it is. It's sin. We confess it to you and we repent, God. And God, we thank you that as we do that, you promise us forgiveness and God, you promise us power. So I speak life over each and every person here today watching this, all that will watch it recorded. God, I pray power, God, and forgiveness and life in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that you've done everything that you needed to do in order to pay for our sin and to bring us back into right relationship with you, God. So right now we, we remind ourselves of that in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. All right, you guys, in Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. We love you guys. We're excited to see you for a good Friday service at 7 p.m. this Friday night. We'll pray together at 714. Make sure you jump on Unite 714. Make sure that you jump on the flag page and like and share it. Let's get some donations going on that and let's help some people. Pastor Eric, you got anything else? And, and invite for Easter, guys, just like before. I mean, invite, invite, invite. And we'll be getting some great invite materials online for you guys to be yes. able to share um, throughout the week. But let's use this opportunity where so many people are connected digitally to invite them. And let's we're going we're gonna to celebrate next week together. It's so be great. super specifically, what we'll do, you guys, is we will schedule the live stream for Easter Sunday 
maybe we can do that today even, mm -hmm. and we'll get that ready. And so you can go, we'll pin it to the top of our Facebook page. You can go right to it and there's a share button underneath, hit share, and then you can share that out. It'll be the exact live stream that we're going to use Easter Sunday. So that'll be a great way to do it. So awesome, you guys. We love you. Have an amazing Sunday. For those of you who are in the New Year Connect, we'll see you in about 15 yep. minutes. Reach out if you need anything. We love you guys and we're in this together. So. All right, guys. Have an amazing Sunday. We love you.